Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel English Literature 101. The topic for today is a poem titled The Duck and the Kangaroo, prescribed in CBSE for classes 8 as well as 9. In class 8, we find the poem in the book Honeydew, whereas in class 9, we find the same poem in a book called Beehive. Before going into the detailed explanation of the poem, let us know something about the poet. The poet of this poem is Edward Lear. Edward Lear was born on 12th May 1812 in Holloway, England, and he died in the year 29 Jan 1888. He was an English artist, illustrator, musician, author, and poet. He is specially known for his limericks, a form he popularized. As an author, he is known principally for his popular nonsense collection of poems, songs, short stories, botanical drawings, and alphabets. He also composed and published 12 musical settings of Tennyson's poetry. Some of his notable works are Book of Nonsense, 1846, Illustrated Excursions in Italy, 1846, The Falls of the Kalama, Albania, 1851, Nonsense Songs and Stories, 1870, Laughable Lyrics, 1877, etc. So without any further delay, let's begin with the poem. The Duck and the Kangaroo as the name suggests, the poem is about two animals, a kangaroo and a duck. This poem is basically a humorous poem, which falls in the category of nonsense verse. It was first published in Lear's 1870 collection called Nonsense Songs. The poem depicts a conversation or we can say a dialogue between an aspirational duck and a free-spirited kangaroo wherein the duck persuades the kangaroo to take her on a ride around the world on its back. So does the kangaroo take the duck on a ride? If yes, then what are the problems and difficulties that the kangaroo face while taking the duck on its back? What are the solution to such problems? To know the answers, let's move into the poem. Said the duck to the kangaroo, Good gracious, how you hop over the fields and the water too as if you never would stop. The first four opening lines of the poem makes the reader move into the story right in the middle of the action. In these lines, the duck describes the kangaroo's perpetual motion, which is hopping. The duck is awestruck seeing the kangaroo hop over the fields and water. The use of exclamation in the second line not only emphasizes that the duck is mesmerized to see the kangaroo hop and move about happily across meadows and ponds, but also gives the reader a hint about the duck's central problem. Let's see what's the duck's problem. My life is a bore in this nasty pond, and I long to go out in the world beyond. I wish I could hop like you, said the duck to the kangaroo. As I said you earlier that the duck faces a problem. In these lines, the duck's problem is clear. What is the problem? The problem is that the duck laments or the duck is unhappy because unlike the kangaroo who is free to hop as it wishes, the duck faces a limitation. That is, she is pond bound. The whole world of the duck surrounds the pond. Just like the kangaroo, the duck also wants to hop and see the whole world, but she is unable to do so. Please give me a ride on your back, said the duck to the kangaroo. I would sit quite still and say nothing but quack. In these lines, the duck requests the kangaroo to make it sit on its back and go on a world trip. And the duck even assures that she would not speak a word and it will sit quietly and would only quack, which is the sound made by the duck. The whole of the long day through, and we would go to the D and the jelly bolly, over the land and over the sea. Please take me on a ride, oh do, said the duck to the kangaroo. 
In these lines, the duck says the kangaroo that they would visit places named D and Jellyboli, and even they would hop over the land and the sea. And the duck again requests the kangaroo to take it on a ride. Said the kangaroo to the duck, "This requires a little reflection. Perhaps on the whole, it might bring me luck. And there seems but one objection." As the duck keeps on requesting the kangaroo for a ride, the kangaroo is filled with pride and excitement, and replies politely, saying that he needs to reflect or think over the matter. He said that the idea could be good for him, but he had some objections. Now, what is the kangaroo's objection? Let's find out. If you will let me speak so bold, your feet are unpleasantly wet and cold. And would probably give me the rheumatism," said the kangaroo. In these lines, the kangaroo talks about the problem or objection that he would face if he takes the duck on a ride in its pack. He says that the duck's wet and cold feet could give him rheumatism, or we can say a kind of joint pain. The kangaroo doubted that he could even get cold. Said the duck. As I sat on the rocks, I have thought over that completely, and I brought four pairs of worsted socks, which fit my web feet neatly. And to keep out the cold, I have brought a clock, and every day a cigar I'll smoke, all to follow my own dear true love of a kangaroo. In these lines, the duck understands the kangaroo's problems and thinks over it, and gives a solution. The duck says that it would get four pair of socks to keep its feet warm, and also decides to wear a cloak or a shrug and smoke cigar to keep itself warm. The duck makes all necessary arrangements to satisfy its friend's doubts and also to protect the kangaroo, as it was his lovely friend. Save the kangaroo! I am ready. All in the moonlight pale. But to balance me well, dear duck, sit steady, and quite at the end of my tail. So away they went with a hop and a bound, and they hopped the whole world three times round. And who so happy? Oh, who as the duck and the kangaroo? In these lines, we find that the kangaroo is convinced with the duck's response and is ready to go on a ride with the duck. So at night, during moonlight, they started their trip with a hop. The kangaroo asked the duck to hold it firmly, and they travelled around the world. Both of them enjoyed each other's company immensely. Here I have provided you with a list of words which would make the understanding of the poem better. So guys that's all for today's video I hope you all have understood the poem well if you have any queries related to the poem do let me know in the comment section below and please don't forget to like share and subscribe my channel and those who haven't subscribed my channel yet I would request them to please like subscribe and share it and don't forget to hit the bell icon for further updates thank you